All right, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School. Actually, it's Southwest Rod and Custom. We're in Dallas, Texas. But uh, right now, you're watching DIY Auto School, which is do-it-yourself, automotive, everything. And what we're doing is we are putting our safety gloves on. We're putting our safety gloves on because we are working with an item here that might hurt if you touch it. It might bite you, like a snake, for instance or maybe a spider, uh, you know, anything that might prick your finger and hurt you, that's what this item will do. So what we're talking about here, we're talking about braided steel fuel line. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. When you're building a hot rod, a custom car, this, that, or the other, or you're adding something to your fuel system, most of the time, you're going to use the braided steel fuel line. Now, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is our braided steel fuel line. It's uh, encased in stainless steel braid, and you got your 3 8 fuel line inside there. This is very, very high pressure, uh, high tensile steel uh, fucking shit that, you know, a tank can run over it, and it would still probably be good to use. I'm here today to show you how to make your fuel line using an AN fitting. Now, it's a very simple, easy job, but you got to have the right tools to do it with. And when I say the right tools, I'm not talking about going out to this fucking company that makes these fittings and buying their high-tech fucking wrenches and all this other bullshit that they say you don't fucking need anyway. I'm sorry, they say that you do need it, but I said you don't fucking need it. Because all you need is a good fucking brain, a nice pair of leather gloves, a little screwdriver, and some fucking basic wrenches that fit the item that we're going to be screwing together, and you're ready to fucking go. So before we go any further, this is what we're working on right here. We're working on our 1965 Chevy truck, and if we come over here, we can see that this has an LS2 fuel injection drivetrain in it. This is out of a Corvette or a Camaro, same fucking thing, basically. And the fuel line is a single fuel line rail. Now what that means, there's our fuel line over here. Let me get around and, all right, here's our fuel line hook up here. And you can see that it starts out with a braided fuel line right off the bat. And then of course it goes down into the frame rail and then we're gonna bring it back to the tank. But this system that we're looking at here is a single fuel line because the fuel pump that we're using has a return line built onto the fuel pump itself, which is a much better system to use due to the fact that you don't have to purchase uh, as much fuel line and fittings, okay? So using the return fuel line fuel pump fucking item is going to save you a lot of time and expense if you have that kind of system. Now these lines can also be used for a lot of other stuff. They can be used for let's say an airline on your airbag system for instance. Anything that requires a high pressure use, the steel braided line with the AN fitting is something that you might consider on using. So if you look right there you can see that here is our braided line that we made 
And this is the fitting that we call AN, AN fitting. And this is a number six. That's the most common fuel line used on a street performance vehicle. If it's a race vehicle, they go up to a number eight, which is the next size up. But the number six is equivalent to a three-ace fuel line hose. So when you purchase your hose, you'll have to go ahead and get the, 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 the right size AN fitting that will fit that hose, which would be a number six. And then, of course, when you purchase your fittings, they come in all shapes, sizes, and forms, from 90-degree bands to 45-degree bands to... This is a straight one right here, but they also make them where they're like a U-shape. There's all kinds of fittings that you can purchase. They make swivel head styles, that, you know. So it depends on how you configure your fuel system to work is what kind of fittings you're going to purchase. On this particular application we're going to do right here, what we're going to do is we're using all straight fittings on everything because it's a, a, an easy fucking wham bam thank you ma'am situation. We don't have a lot of turns, twists, and angles. So we're just going to use this one to make the job very simple and easy. But what we're here to do is to show you how to make your fuel line and do it right without fucking it up. Because to fit this thing on, the fuel line, actually takes a little bit of knowledge without fucking up the hose and fucking up your very expensive AN fitting. So the first thing that I do, I go ahead and I install an end on the hose itself. Now you can see that I've ran my hose through here. And then what I'll do is I will connect it on to one end where the hose should be connected. And on this here, it would be the fuel pump. And, of course, we're going to be running it toward the engine, which will be connected to our fuel line. So I got that. And then what I do is I'll get up under the truck, and I'll mark everything out. Pull the line out of the vehicle, and you can see right there that I went ahead and took some masking tape and wrapped it around the hose where I'm going to cut. Now, there's a reason for that. Because if you cut this and you don't have tape around it, what's going to happen is when you're using a cutting wheel or a chop saw or whatever you're using, the blade of the cutter will go ahead and catch that braided line and it will unfray it. You see what I'm talking about? We don't want that. That's what we don't want right there. That's what the tape's for. And then once I have everything marked out, what I'll do, I'll come over to my vise. And I put my fuel line in the vise very lightly. I don't want to crimp it down tight. I just want to put it in there enough to hold the line. And this is where uh, your wife or your girlfriend might come in to be that third hand to hold that line there while you're uh, tightening your uh, clamp down. But then once that's done, what we'll do is we're going to take our cutting wheel. So then right in the middle of the tape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half. And you want to be as accurate as possible and cut it straight down. You don't want to go at an angle. That's another important aspect because when you put your fitting together on it, if the hose is at an angle, it's going to give it that. It's going to give it a little bit of leadway for it to actually leak, and it's not going to fit properly. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take a little screwdriver, just like you see right here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that tape very carefully. And if you look at the end of that hose, you can see that it's starting to fray out. That is why it's very important that you use a cutting wheel on it and not a hacksaw. Because if you use a hacksaw, you're just pulling on it and twisting it and making it fray more. So then you want to go ahead and take your fitting and you want to go ahead and separate the blue from the red, just like this. And while I'm doing this, I want to let you know that these are made out of aluminum, so it's very important that you're very careful with them. And I'm going to show you why in a second. Once you separate the blue from the red, you got your female end and you got your male end. The female end is what sits on top of the hose, just like that. But we got to get all this inside there. Do you see that? Do you see how it's sprayed out? And this is the trick that I use to get all that in there. Now I'm sure they make some kind of fucking, you know, bullshit tool that you can buy for 50 bucks or some fucking shit. Or maybe you out there might have your own way to do it and you're telling me that I'm a stupid ass, I don't know, but you know, that's the situation we got. Everybody's got their own way to do stuff. So let's not argue on here and complain and say, hey, that isn't how I would do it, all right? 
if you want to go ahead and comment, why don't we help each other out and leave comments of suggestions and tech tips to help the next guy out that watches this that might not do it or might not want to do it the way I am fucking doing it. Plain and simple. So the way that I do it, I take uh, the fitting and I put it underneath it to grab the bars on the bottom, the barb, and then I'll take my screwdriver and I basically go around and tuck, tuck it in just like this. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I am actually tucking the uh, hose inside the fitting and making sure that, now see it just came out. So once again I'm going to hook it like this, just like that, and I'm trying to do this where you can see it. That's the situation we have. So I hook the bottom of it and then on the top I'll take my screwdriver and tuck it in all the way around just like you see me doing here. Once you have it tucked in and properly fit, you'll want to go ahead and turn it counterclockwise onto the rubber hose. Now the way that I do this is I use a socket and I got it on the off position and I push on it as I am turning it just like you see right there. So now we have learned that the barb has got to go inside the fitting and I use my screwdriver to tuck it in around. Once that's done I take my ratchet, I'm going over this again for you, and then I have it set on the off position. That way I know that it's turning to the left instead of the right. Because this is kind of like using a reverse thread. And then I'm going to push on it and turn it at the same time. And then once I see where it stops sucking onto the hose, that's all we're going to do. Then you'll take your blue male end, you'll go ahead and stick it in there very lightly, not pushing it or forcing it, and letting it start to screw on all by itself. If it feels like it's binding up in any way whatsoever, stop immediately. Because this right here is what will happen to you if it gets cross-threaded. You can see where I started to screw this one on. And I wasn't paying attention, and I kept on going, and I kept on going, and it fucked our fitting up. This fitting is trash. This fitting cost approximately $13 to $15. I don't remember, but it's somewhere in that fucking range. Uh, it might have cost more, but these are very expensive. And if you fuck that fitting up, or you cross-thread it, uh, you're fucked. You're fucked in the ass, and you might as well go ahead and shove it in your ass, and save it for a fucking trophy or something because it's no good. It's fucking trash, plain and simple. So you want to go ahead and start that on by hand, being very careful and making sure that you can feel that going on like it should be. We're going to go ahead and take our wrench. Now the wrench that I use for this, I use a ratchet wrench because it's just a lot easier than taking the wrench and going off and on because if you look right here, this is a swivel end, and then you got your nut right here. So you want to catch both those at the same time. So before we go any further, we want to make sure that this is going to go on with ease and it's not going to bind up on us. And I can see that that's going to go on very, very nicely. I like the way that it's going on. I'm not using a lot of force. I'm not using a lot of pressure. What we'll do then is we'll go ahead and loosen our vise. And we'll stick the red part in the vise, having approximately a quarter inch or less sticking out. So when we are done tightening that up, the wrench won't bind and mess up the red part of our uh, fitting. Now, something else I want to tell you about using a vise, and this is important. If you're worried about the way that you want these fucking things to look, then you need to find other means, such as another wrench. Now, you can actually put this other wrench on here, and then you can use this wrench here and hold it together and all that. But I'm really not particular about uh, if I scratch the anodization off of that, because you will never see this. It's going to be under the truck. Nobody gives a fuck. Who gives a rat shit? I don't fucking care. But if this was on top of the engine, and I wanted to protect that from not being burnt, scratched, or marred, I would go ahead and use the two-wrench system and take my time putting it on. So you want to catch your wrench and catch both the fitting itself and the nut, the female, the male nut, and just lightly put that on, taking your time as you're doing it. When you start to get to the end of 
uh, your fitting, you want to be very careful with your wrench so as not to get up to the red part and start grinding into that. So now that we are close, we want to be able to watch our wrench very nicely and make sure that our fitting goes on proper and we're not going to fuck up the female part that's on the hose. And I'm trying to do this where you can see everything going on, but uh, I do have to be careful. The customer did pay for these and I don't want to ruin one for that purpose. And now I'm taking my time just so I can get it on there and I don't want to burr that and then we're done. So now what we've done is we have made our AeroQuip Earl's fucking uh, performance fucking parts, whatever you want to call these tips, AN fitting. We have now made our custom fit braided, steel braided, stainless steel braided, uh, high pressure, high tech fucking hose that's going to last many, many years without replacement. That's how you make that. That's how you do it. Be very careful. Take your fucking time. Don't cross thread those and have fun and enjoy what the fuck you're doing while you're doing it. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you that you don't need the fancy fucking tools to do the fucking job. Showing you that if you fuck up, all right, you fucked up, plain and simple, all right? And I'm also showing you that anybody in the world can do this shit. Anything that you see me fucking do, you can do. Because I learned by myself. I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have anybody coming over here. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a my friend Pete. The only thing I had is a little guy named We. And when I say we, I'm talking about me, myself, and fucking I. Where the fuck did you come from? What the fuck are you doing here, dude? I'm fucking working. What are you doing? Oh, so you now you want to be my pal. Now you want to be my pal. I'm sorry. This is we. This is we. The only fucking guy that I'm going to trust to help me. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm trying to tell you? All right, I told them, okay? Okay, I fucking told them. Now get the fuck out of here. So learn from your mistakes. If you fuck up, it's always a fixable situation. And in the end, it's going to turn out okay anyway. We'll see you later. Take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, and a little motherfucker we call we around here. Getting her done, doing it right, and showing you how to be the smart guy. You are learning from my mistakes. That makes you a smarter person. Take it easy. I hear ya. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I saw that. Your little fucking seashell busted off. Your your arm. Is that your arm? That I guess that would be your arm, huh? Oh, now we can call you the one arm fucking bandit. Okay, don't worry about it. You're still here. Okay. Take it easy, buddy. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.